Well, once again, this is Fear Led TV, where we aim for life change and peace. My name is Freddie Davis III, and today, once again, we are digging into our series called Meditation 40 Days, 40 Nights. If, first of all, if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure you go and hit the subscribe button and make sure you share with all the people that you know so they can be informed and they can be encouraged just like you are. So thank you for stopping by this day. Let's get it started, shall we? So today's scripture is coming from Psalms 103, and we're gonna go through verse one through eight. This Psalm is really awesome and it's really encouraging because David is talking about how thankful he is and what benefits God gives us. This is a really good reminder of just the God that we serve and what he's able to do and what he can do in our situation. So let's look to the scriptures and we're gonna talk about it. I'm coming from the New King James Version and it reads, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. It was so good, he said it twice. And forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. What? the eagles hold up is that an eagle the lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed amen we did just read psalms 103 verse 1 through 6 now let's talk about it. bless the lord oh my soul listen i can hear david's excitement like i said it was so good he said it twice all right and the thing is how do you bless someone who has given you everything right and the fact is we can bless God with our words and our lives that's how we bless the Lord our lives are a living sacrifice to him so he wants us to give it back to him so that's what we do we bless the Lord with all that is within us now David could have said bless the Lord with all my spirit our soul spirit and flesh of course are two three different things so our soul is what drives this vessel that we're in our spirit is what god gives us and comforts us with to guide to do the right thing and then our flesh of course is our flesh that you know acts up and does sinful stuff and that's what we come in this world with we come in this world with our flesh and our soul now the soul can be influenced by our flesh or the soul can be influenced by our spirit now I like how David said, when he says, bless the Lord with all my soul, I believe he's saying, bless the Lord with all that is within me, the good and the bad. You know, it goes hand in hand. And then once you bless the Lord with all your soul, basically you are exalting him in all areas of your life, your weak areas and your strong areas. Why? Because you want God to take control of the whole situation. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What are his benefits? I'm so glad you asked. God is so precise that he listed it in the same scripture. <laughs> We're about to look into it. It says, who forgives all your iniquities? Hold up, time out. What'd you say? Let me hear that again. Who forgives all your iniquities? Listen, everything that you've done, everything that you felt shame for, listen, God says, I can forgive that. The thing is, we have to align ourselves and we have to confess with our hearts that Jesus has risen, that he is who he says he is and we have to believe that jesus is the cornerstone and it is the centerpiece of our faith without jesus there's nothing to stand on the blessings of that is that he forgives our sins and forgives our iniquities y'all this is the whole reason why we can have so much love in our hearts is because god loved us first even when we were dead in our sins even when we were uh obnoxious even when we were prideful even when we didn't care about anything. When we didn't care, God was caring for us. You may feel like you're the most inadequate person in this room, wherever you are. And let me just say, though, <laughs> though that might be true, no, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. God doesn't see you like that. God sees you as potential. You can point to any person in the Bible, yo. Any person in the Bible, they were flawed up. And what does God do? He shows us that God is able to use 
anybody that he chooses because of his love and his persistence for us. Now, these people wouldn't have been able to be used if they wouldn't have acknowledged who God was. So that's the first thing. We have to acknowledge who he is and believe and trust that he is who he say he is. And when we do that, yo, ain't no limit to what we can do. Ain't no limit to what God can do in us who heals all your diseases, yo. Coronavirus, flu, cancer. Listen, who is able to, who heals all our disease. God, you are able to heal this, but even if you don't, I know you have the ability to. I have to be able to lean on God's will more than my own. Just like Jesus, when he was in the garden and he was praying, God, if past, I want this cup to pass, please. If, if there's any way you can, you can have this have to happen a different way, then I would appreciate it. But not my will, your will be done. He was willing to die for God's will. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to put my hand up and say, hey, God, I want that, um, want that lung cancer. Give me that so I can die for you. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that with the sickness, God is still good. And without it, God is still good. And though it is painful and it, 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 and it hurts, to see people go through this. God has not left you. He's still there. He's still present. And you can still look towards him. Because this, that we're, the world that we live in right now is just temporary. So the next one we have is who redeems our life from destruction. This is where testimonies come into play. You, you see somebody at one stage of their life and then they come to this other stage, but there's this in-between stage that they've gone through. And so who saves your life from destruction, God is able to restore, he's able to redeem, he's able to fix what is broken in our life. And he's able to save our lives from destruction because when we didn't care anything about our lives and just living reckless, God was still saying, this is my child. I'm going to be patient with you. And once you recognize that I'm patient with you, and once you come to this point in your life where you have no choice but to look up, I'll be there. Listen, he's everything that we need and everything we've been wanting. He crowns our head with loving kindness and tender mercies. He crowns our head. Think about being crowned. When you, when you finish a race back in the Olympic days, back in the, uh, in the Roman days, right? You had these empires and you had these, these major events where they saw the person that was battling the gladiator in the center and just battling it out. For what? For a crown, yeah. Once, <laughs> listen, once we get to the finish, we're gonna be crowned. But he says, God says, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. He ain't talking about when you get to heaven, yo. He talking about right now. Who crowns you right now? Who's watching over you right now? Who has love for you right now? Who has mercy for you right now, yo? He crowns your head, yo. He crowns your head. Embrace that. Embrace the fact that he crowns your head and that he is watching over you. Next is who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. What is good things? Good things like life. Good things like truth. Good things like hope, faith, love, good things, who satisfies your mouth with good things. Letting go of the past, letting go of the negativity, letting go of the toxic things and people, bad habits in your life, letting go of that and satisfying your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Without the, the love and the faith, you're not gonna be able to fly like an eagle. You're not gonna be able to have the youth like an eagle. You're not gonna be able to be at your fullest if God is not satisfying you with what you need. You're not gonna be able to be like an eagle. You'll be like a pigeon. Just kidding, I mean, shout out to the pigeons out there, but I'm just saying, I'd probably rather be an eagle than a pigeon. I mean, come on now. Jesus loves a pigeon too. Verse six says, the Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. In our nation right now, it's under a lot of chaotic injustices, a lot of tension. 
God says the Lord executes righteousness. His will for justice is prominent. His will for us to treat each other with love is very clear. It doesn't take a rocket science to figure out that God is love and to figure out that I should be treating you the same way I should be treated. Regardless of what you look like, regardless of your social status, regardless of your financials, regardless of who you vote for, we should treat each other with love and kindness. So God is a God of justice. Without justice, there is no love. And you can't have love without justice. God wants us to unify together. He wants us to embrace each other's differences. He wants us to grow. He wants us to make sure that we are building each other up. Because whatever is against God's agenda is considered opposition. And when there is opposition, then you're going against the kingdom of God. So if you are not for justice and only for justice for a group of people, and guess what? You're going against God's agenda. So, oh my brothers and sisters, let's unify together. Let's bless the Lord together. Let's grow together. Let's encourage each other because this is the kingdom of God. The family, the body of believers, we are a family, yo. Regardless of where you live, where you stay, regardless of your location, plug, we are believers and we are supposed to stick together and we bless the Lord because he first loved us. That what this means to me is that in my life, I need to continue and to even do more of blessing the Lord with my word and my life and speaking life into others. Because I know without him speaking into my life, I don't know where I would be. I would be stuck in my own ways. I would not try to excel in anything. I would keep hanging on to past, which is only toxic for a person. But I thank God for Jesus and I thank God for a sacrifice. And Psalms 103, verse one through six. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to Spirit Led TV. Once again, make sure you click the subscribe button below, click the notification bell, so you can be informed whenever we drop another video out. Um, make sure you share this with your friends, your family, your coworkers, your enemies, your loved ones, everybody on your block, uh, your church members, granny, auntie, uncle James, uncle, auntie, Betty, and remember this, I create to live. I create to live. Ooh, 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 ooh. I don't know. It sounded nice when I first did it.